Shwabi Khan for having me. Yeah. And uh, preferably, I like to be called Freedom Jacob Caesar on an Akwami Bidiaku. I know oh. Cheddar and a lot of people still want to keep this name up. <laughs> but um, I can't go by a nickname right now mm. when I'm starting to be a leader for my people. I think that I like to be addressed by my government name or by my ordained name. Very well. Thank you. So freedom, I can call freedom. Freedom, yes. yes. <laughs> Thank you. But wh why did you choose this freedom in the first place? Freedom is practically what we have been looking for, mm. searching for. We only had independence on a contractual basis, <laughs> you know. And as you can see, from 1957, it's just that we didn't have to have slave masters or colonial masters leading us anymore. But I think the slave is still ongoing indirectly we're still all striving to go back to europe but this time they're not even paying for us we are running there so um i brought the freedom to make sure that that freedom that we've been lacking for many decades now hope has brought it to us mm. and i'm coming with that hope when we heard about the freedom we didn't think i mean we were now thinking about nelson mandela and 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 the the the, the uh, representation he brought to africa but in any event uh before we go into a, a, a deeper discussion i i remember i recall just about was this about two months or a month ago you organized an event here in ghana that brought some top leadership uh, across the african uh, or the african hemisphere how, how did it go for you because we heard the news about it and what the intention was all about and we begin to wonder how, why you took that move of actually trying to uh, embrace the African continent as a whole. Well, thank you very much for asking this question. So first of all, I wanted to bring back that um, ancestral feel of leadership. Um, when you look back in the 60s and the 50s, we used to have the conventions, the likes of Martin Luther, Kwame Nkrumah, Malcolm X, people that stood and spoke in front of hundreds of thousands of people. And we don't seem to have that opportunity anymore when you see 20,000 or 30,000 kids standing in front of someone today that means that person is a musician but it's different to entertain people than to uplift people and inspire and motivate people so I realized that we're lacking that sort of talk talking festival in our society and I decided to bring it back but it's the people that I chose also I chose the two biggest activists on the continent and probably the two new uh, political leaders who have had it their way and have enforced that narrative into the political scene so these four people of course were going to create an impact and convince a lot of people and it would have transcended to more and more people for however and for whatever reason why it had to be stopped uh, with the government being involved i wouldn't want to go sure, deeper sure. into that or dive into that i i just think that i will leave that for uh, for people to have your own discretion but i think such things should be good for us hmm. as a nation as a continent and as black people you know, we need to see who our true leaders are and what is their voice being ignited towards. Mm. Is it over governance? Is it for leadership? Is it for empowerment? Is it, what are we lacking? Are they bringing us hope? Or they are coming to sing albums to us? Uh, I mean, respect to most of these musicians who are doing their thing all over the world. In fact, they've gone across Africa mm. and they're selling music everywhere in the world. But I think our leaders should also be dominating the world the same way musicians, our musicians are dominating so, the so world. So it, it brings me back uh, to the first question I was going to ask you in the deeper in interview. What exactly have you seen that you think that you can correct about this country? Because they tell you that uh, the, the people with the mindset of the people... It will only take someone with a, I mean, some extra level of passion to take us through the woods. Well, I'm not here to correct people. Mm. I'm here to add value to people. I respect people. You know, um, well, everybody's not wise, but ev everybody also is not supposed to be smart. However, I think if knowledge is not to be shared, then what is the purpose for it? Okay, and I also believe that we are all not perfect, so we make mistakes and we learn from it. And from the past mistakes of our fathers and politicians, I've realized that there is a whole lot of opportunity for us to make that change and help to create a redemptive change that would mm. actually uh, create some kind of 
a working scenario environment you know production industrializing entrepreneurial um, uh, um, uh, empowerment you know that we've been lacking in the past but why are we lacking it because it's never started from the youth sector so mm -hmm. I realized that you know there is that change that hasn't been tapped into where our leaders <coughs> would concentrate on the very young ones who are coming mm -hmm. so they can inherit whatever that they are doing and if they have done some mistakes that's when they correct themselves. Mm. So I might be correcting myself based on some mistakes that I've seen in the political scene and thinking that if I've also been able to acquire this much success and uh, I want to stand alone and be rich alone, then of course I end up in a self-centered space. So I decided to come out mm. from that sort of perspective that people are going to have for me as a young, rich man you know it, it's it's it, i couldn't see any interest in that anymore because i've heard some people ask i mean you're a, you're a businessman and you are successful so why i mean muddy the waters with politics so is that what people are looking for they just want to be rich and they just want to be successful and they want to be rich for themselves those people mm. i wish that they're hearing me now that they need to get up they need to remember that life is not about just making yourself rich becoming successful and standing successful alone or being rich alone life is about adding value to whatever you came to meet some people came to meet human beings nature and this world now you cannot destroy the human beings mm. neither are you supposed to destroy the nature and the world is not going to stand there what you destroy the whole world so the best thing is for us to add value to these three things nature humanity and the world and mm. that's what i'm doing i just don't want to be rich for myself and my world right now is ghana but it goes further to africa i can't just get up and change africa overnight mm. and i can't just get up and become a leader in ghana overnight i have decided to go around and introduce myself mm -hmm. and then also learn and hear the people what they want what kind of change do they want and then i want to apply my leadership skills within the industry of political assistance that we have in probably we haven't been able to do much with it in the past 40 years mm. now i'm not here to correct people but i think that is a mistake that we have to learn from mm. i mean uh, what, what critical things would you want to concentrate on because you are a businessman so it shows that business-wise, I think the last time I had Kennedy Japan here, he was talking business and uh, how he can use that knowledge and experience within the business framework to, to elevate our fortunes. What have you seen that critically, if we turn around, will take us through beyond all the speeches we've had, I mean, in time past? I mean, the first things first, some of the uh equations of of our statistics in terms of employed and unemployed mm. unsuccessful people and successful people mm. the ratios are too high you have like five percent employment and 95 percent unemployed or 90 percent of the nation is unemployed what kind of country are we living in that that it doesn't mean the whole 95 is unemployed but the five percent that have vacancies to employ employ themselves the other 40 percent who are within the 95 percent that is considered as unemployed are just retailers so they either have a table on the roadside selling granite selling this selling that or going to china bringing something and selling so everybody is selling to someone where are the people and where are we going to get the money to buy if we're not getting the jobs so the first most biggest critical thing is not even about us doing business or selling or trading to get money for ourselves it's how do we create jobs for the people that amounts to our population so there could be a curriculum that gives us an economical balance a stability create economic prosperity for humanity this is something that is not being done for me as a businessman in the skills and in the times that i've made myself become successful in this industry i see crisis as the things that you have to let the, as the lid that you have to lift and when you lift it mm -hmm. that's when you smell opportunities that's when you can create opportunities and i really think that anybody that would think this way and try to create employment for these masses would definitely open and lift up a lid and mm -hmm. just introduce a whole lot of opportunities for the nation so you have a set of policies that you you want to rule out because you've spoken about uh, uh employment and unemployment issues are you having some set of policies that are different I mean, from what, what, what we, we have had in time past? Because 
one thing I, I see that in your campaign especially on social media a lot of young people are really i mean who's enough for it. even here in the north i was surprised to hear some young people say that no they, when we kept this post some people said oh this is our man this is our man these are young 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 people who are hoping and looking at it that okay we can have a turn around now we have a young man what set of policies that you think that you are bringing on board to favor such people who have seen a new hope in you well my first policy is the 16 revolutional industrial industrial revolution and why 16 regions because i think that we live in a country that only one region is fully active and that's accra mm. the other 15 is non-active you don't add kumasi takra it's, it's really non-active because people even in kumasi maybe 50 percent of the kumasianos mm. are already in accra and other parts you know uh, and and they've moved there for good we, we see that there's brick brick business in these areas in these cities in which cities takradi accra kumase and they are the ones determining our gdp properly i don't think so mm. i don't think so and besides that uh, just so i don't completely move away from your question mm. there isn't our people controlling these areas and saying that they're creating mass wealth for themselves mm. you rather see multinationals and foreign entities who are in our bushes extracting and creating wealth for themselves but it's not really for the people who are based in the region and i think that is our job we have to do that as a country we are the ones who are supposed to put those plants there that is actually extracting our gold and our oil and we are the ones that are supposed to create the jobs for the youth who are in that in that region if you go to the region and you go to the grassroots you're going to see it for yourselves and you can see it internally for yourselves that you go to i just came from uh, talon and it's one of the places that i felt so good being there and i told them that look you don't have tall buildings you don't have <coughs> hospitals and skyscrapers but you have happiness here and i could see a whole lot of kids and youth up and coming but as much as they are happy I can't see the hope because mm. they don't know where they are going and I think that is our responsibility as a country for us to build these regions give them the opportunity to have their own economy just like if you go to England Manchester is one of the regions I mean belongs to one of the regions of England mm. but Manchester on its own have a football team alone that is worth billions and it has a lot of industrial platforms that has created jobs for everybody in fact they fill up their stadiums when they're just playing a common match and then people even in ghana are watching manchester or or, or liverpool or or uh, juventus why should we be here and looking up to people from outside and why can't we at least copy what they're doing or repeat or replicate what they're doing this is very simple why can't our regions be successful why is it that everybody have to come to Accra and go to ministry of this ministry of that ministry of this I don't understand it I want a change I want a change if they don't like it I think I am going to give that change to this nation but there are people who are coming and they need this help they need these jobs and they need to understand that the state property of the uh, resources the mineral resources belongs to us as mm. Ghanaians, it doesn't belong to foreigners and it doesn't have to be our leaders or our politicians who will instruct foreigners to come and take it away they have to grow and see that this is what belong to us mm. this i want to introduce in ghana i want the regions and the youth to see that this is what i have in tamale this is what i have in boliga this is what i have in ashanti region and for the sake of this if we're able to put this plant this is the turnover and so, that's what so, i'm bringing so let, let me find out i mean is it the first time you are visiting Tamale? Second time. But this, this is, is really time. the first time I'm coming to radio stations. And yeah, yeah let me take this time <laughs> to pick up Radio Tamale, so, the voice of Tamale. Yeah, so, so I mean, with the pl few places you visited, I don't know how many places you visited, I mean, since you got in. And whether you have, I mean, really seen some potentials. If you have some dreams that you think that the northern region need to really tap into. And if you eventually get the opportunity to be the president what specifics because we've had government says that we will set up a district i mean a factory in every region or in every district it ended up being in a different story altogether in the northern part Canadian japan says that i have seen that i can put a, a watermelon factory somewhere 
I think there are juice factories somewhere. What have you seen in the northern part that you think that, be, I mean, getting the opportunity to be a president? Well, first of all, uh, just to answer your question, uh, I want to say to you, Robicon, mm. that it's one thing to say, it's another thing to do. Exactly. It's very easy to say things, mm. but it's very hard to do it. And you know, as you already know, we're young people who have created and built landmarks ourselves. We have built developments. We have created jobs and businesses, entrepreneurial skills. That takes a lot of responsibilities. I hope that these politicians are doing the same before they even come and sit in those chairs they're sitting you in. You know, when you become a president, you are taking care of the country and now the I difference will be clear i don't think you are hearing what i said mm. it's based on the experience that we've had in the past that is what can make us say what we're capable of mm -hmm. doing now we're not here to give promises which i know that a lot of politicians are out there giving promises no politicians give mm. promises i'm not a politician i'm a leader i have a purpose and my purpose is very different if i have to look at tamale today one mm. of your biggest problem here you're you're more or less a landmark mm. uh, sorry uh, a landlock but you also have the potential to distribute to the nation because you have a lot of cashew you have a lot of shea butter you have a lot of things but your first thing that i'm going to ask you is have you ever thought about your assets okay mm. the infrastructure for you to distribute these things with speed even if i was to build a factory here what is the point if i have to drive 12 hours from accra to come and pick those things i will not come mm. so i have to find a way to first of all uh, build a master plan a master plan can start with just an infrastructure of uh let's say 500 mm. kilometers of a railway mm. that is speed train that will bring 500 containers from Accra to Tamale. Then I can start building Tamale. How do you think these factories that the politicians are promising you that you're going to build, how do you think it's going to get here? One plant is the size of four or five houses. What, how they're going to put it on the road and shake it and bring it here? So they some of them are lying to you because it's not going to be that easy. You need to create a massive planning, not just a town planning. It's called master planning planning and any successful people person in this world they are the mastermind behind their master game they plan and that is what life is about i want to encourage the kids who are listening to me now that life is to be lived but what is important out of life that in fact is more important than life is the time because when you run out of time, there's no more life. And it's how you use your time. If you're ready to use your time, then you have to become a good planner. Ta uh, Tamale needs good planning. There is infrastructure. I know that there is water that is supposed to come from Accra all the way here. I forgot that, the name. That, but it's from, We have uh, the uh, Barry Dam. Barry Dam. That comes from Burkina Faso. Okay. So when I was doing my research, I realized that there are teak trees in it mm. that is over 170 years we, we, we have the black volta we have the white volta so all running through so in the western world what they do is when they see these things they see great opportunities tourism mm. coastal transportation transportation some call it ferry mm -hmm. and different things how do you do that you do dredging dredging is industrial if you don't have any industrial mind, you can never dredge one water to meet another. And I'm going to give you a good example. Dubai is a desert. Mm -hmm. Go there today. It's like uh, an island. <laughs> the whole sea is around it. How do you think they got the sea there? Mm. <laughs> they have to start dredging. It's industrial mindset. How do you think they built the building to 110 floors? Without industrialization, you can never build your country and neither can you build a nation. So for all of those who have come as leaders or politicians in this country that have not thought on basis of industrializing their people, their lands, their resources, and the human resources, the mineral resources, these people, we should skip the noise and obey the voice. They're full of noises. I believe in the old mindset that started leadership in Ghana that were going the industrial way. One great example was Kwame Nkrumah. He was bringing a lot of wole. You can't eat wole in those days because they needed the skins to do other things. Okay, after Kwame Nkrumah stopped, they started eating the wole and stopped the industrializing the wole. Now they kill the cow and everything is consumed. You see, 
we have to recycle what we have we have to start to industrialize ourselves mm. and create jobs are we refusing to do so we shouldn't and even if they don't allow us to do it we <laughs> are doing it as a new force mm. so it's a force really so so what, what do you make of um, some suggestions that i mean these are brilliant ideas you are espousing but then you 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 seems to be in the minority and becoming a majority will take a lot of time and i saw your video on social media a gentleman advising that uh, you should join one of the political parties and wh wh what do you what do you make of such suggestions that yes the idea is there but to become a president i mean where we still have dominant political parties that are two major political parties it's not going to be easy i don't want to be a politician I want to be a leader. But you cannot you cannot be a, I mean a leader politically. I mean without getting so, into politics. So I'm trying to tell you that I don't mm. want to be in that realm. Mm. I still want to move as a mover and leadership and let the people themselves decide what they want for a leadership. This is the only way to tweak the narrative a little. So if we want to just dwell on MPP and NDC, mm -hmm. we're going to be doing the same thing for the next 200 years. And if we haven't moved for the past 40 years, there's no one that can tell me in the next 200 years there will be such a huge change. And I don't want to join. If you find people swimming in water or some kind of sea and they don't come back out to the shore, they're probably being eaten by crocodiles or some sharks in the water. If you want to jump in and swim with them, mm. you you stand more risk than the ones who are already swimming in there <laughs> do you understand what i'm saying mm. so that's what i don't want to do i don't want to put myself in that risk of becoming a politician and then i end up letting my people down mm. i end up letting the whole nation down i cannot bear that punishment <laughs> I cannot see myself letting a whole nation down. I would rather let myself down and say that, yes, I messed up in life, but I'm responsible for messing up. But to let the nation down, no. If I get the opportunity to build a nation, mm -hmm. that would be the biggest legacy that I'm destined for. And I would do whatever I have to do in my possible means for a kid that is not born yet to mention my name, to remember. So me. if you get an opportunity today, just let us know the critical change you will make or changes you want to make in the system to achieve that bigger dream you are because we have seen politicians say you say you don't want to be a politician you want to be a leader we have seen some people who in the attempt into i mean coming into power will tell you that in the first three months or 90 days in power these are the changes i would want to put in place the foundation i want to build what foundations would you want to create so robert Khan. First of all, change is not easily done, okay? Change happens in many affluent decades. Mm. You know, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a transition. It's not a project. You can't use a project to change a country or to change a nation, but you can build them. And we all know the process of building. So the first thing that I think I can do but not to change is to go to the foundation of this nation. The foundation of this nation is the youth and start to secure their lives, start to secure their future, start to take the fear away from them and start to give them hope, start to let them know about their resources, their mineral resources and the capacity and ability that they have within the human resources around them. So then they start to think about what they are going to do around their surrounding, how they are going to create wealth, how they are going to build themselves, how they are going to build their hope. I think we can start from there, first of all. And then going back to the roots of all the problems that we're having in this country, everyone is complaining about it. I will go to the roots and start to apply the solution for it. Because the complaint is not going to move us from there. And I don't, I'm not here to complain about MPP or NDC. For me, it's a waste of time. Whatever mistakes that they've done, I either learn from it or get a chance to find the solution for the problems that they have caused so I can move some foot forward. So for me, 
I don't really think that I am ready to give promises that in the first three months when I get to office, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. But some of the things that I think I will initiate would help this country. I mean, we're still here and we're giving gold in exchange of dollars and then we're purging it to our city. And then we're crying about currency devaluation. What a definition of stupidity that we are standing in front of ourselves. You know, you, you have the gold. The gold determines the value of every currency. But you're trading it for someone else's currency. And pegging your currency to that person's currency. Why they take your gold <laughs> and go and look for more money to come and borrow it to you for more interest and take your concessions. So... Are we still under slavery? Yes. Maybe we should start asking ourselves these questions. And if we are still, what kind of slavery is this? This is diplomatic slavery. So you might have a president, you might have a minister, but they are all still going through under diplomatic slavery. They take 10% and give 90% away. The same way that only 10% have jobs and 90% are jobless. We need to reverse this. We, we, we've had some leaders say that. It's not easy, I mean, easy like you, you're talking about. You have traveled wide, just like some of the leaders we have. I've always been asking my, myself a question that you go see the, all the beautiful things across the world. You come over to your own land, you get the opportunity, you are able to do the same things. The good rules, better standards of living, you cannot impl I mean, replicate the same. It costs money. Despite, despite, so, so that is what I'm saying. With all that you have put out, I've, I'm reading messages with people say that you have beautiful ideas. But here is the case. It goes beyond just that. I mean, it goes beyond the talk. You say it costs money. Yes. Do we have the money? Money is built. Money is created. Money is protected. Money is used with wisdom and knowledge. Money is not used based on stolen stuff, based on running and cheating and robbing people. Money cannot stay like that. Now, ask, answer my question for me, mm. if you can. That Do you think as a country, we can borrow money from outside to build all our roads and build all our problems? Do you think we'll be able to take billions of dollars to come from outside and feed all these poor people and build all our roads and build skyscrapers with it? Do you think that should be the strategy? Our leaders tell us that even Nigeria, I mean, America Don't forget is... forget the leaders. So, I want to see so you I, now. I'm, I'm only answering your question with the excuses that have been given by people who are already ruling the land. They tell you that even America is borrowing. For that matter, they have developed to a particular start. I mean, and... This will also take us out of the problem. Well, since you didn't answer my question and you mm. answered it through the leaders, <laughs> let me answer, mm. re-answer what you and the leaders are thinking. Mm. Americans are borrowing money, but they are cutting their own money. So they can choose to say that I borrowed three million or three trillion and they cut it themselves. We don't cut our money. Somebody else is cutting it for us. So if you go and borrow it, you owe your life to them. If Americans tell you they borrow money, they owe their own life to America. Because they are the ones cutting the money. You go to China, they are cutting their own money. You go to Dubai, you're if you come to Africa, we are the ones sitting down waiting for someone to bring the money for us. What a flimsy excuse that is bringing the stupidity out of us. There is no value in us when you go outside the terrain or the boundaries of Africa. Mm. They think Africans cannot do anything. That's why we are acquiring degrees in Ghana. And when we go to England, they turn us to cleaners. Because they don't respect us. If you cannot make your gold become cash for you mm. and solve your problems for you and you go to outside bankers to give you money, to give you three billion, to relieve you from your economic crisis, what kind of leaders and what kind of people are you to sit down and think that some white man is coming to save you? This should stop. We should stop it. I mean, I know you're asking me good questions and great questions and you think that the other people have said it this way and that way. I don't believe in it. Robicon, I'm sorry. I'm I'm a strictly non-believer of all of these things. And I don't believe in excuses as well. I don't want to believe in complaints. I just want to deal with solutions. Because we were born on this earth with problems already. And the ones that started solving problems from the early age are some of the most successful people you see in the world. The ones that thought that if I can make the world become this way, it will be a better place. Today, you see Bill Gates trying to move us from... In fact, moved us from microwave to Microsoft. Today, everybody's uh, bills is going through his gates. You know, his Microsoft has got him. Uh, everyone is paying him. Okay, and that's good intentions. Good, good intentions. We Africans, on the other hand, we are either waiting for someone to come and give us a aid 
all the time who is bringing something for us we're going to borrow money to fix our roads we're going to do and the gold is on your ground how can you be sitting on gold mine and you're looking for gold there must be something wrong with us and we're stopping our children from making money we're stopping our people from becoming successful ever since i became successful in ghana i realized one of our biggest problems is not even our leaders mm. who are sort of robbing us and leaving us empty i realized that we have adopted a disease a mentality that is a disease that if i don't have what you have then i have a question for you where did you get it from <laughs> that's this is the mentality we have in this mm. country why can't you just make it how did you get it instead of where did you get it from you see when i started my journey you were not there to ask me where i'm going so they, they you, think every rich man is a criminal no but it's not even a matter of a criminal mm. is you're asking someone that has already passed the borders that you're yet to cross that how did you get there <laughs> uh, that's you know instead of asking them that show me how to get there they're asking you as if where they have been there it? and you have sneaked your way through the border without <laughs> them seeing that, it where did you get it exactly and i think it's a mentality that we have to change because if we don't change this mentality first of all we have to remember that the same people who are thinking like this are the same people who are also voting to put leaders there so if the leader is already corrupt and the, the citizen is also corrupt then what's going to happen he comes and he gives you bribe then you give your thumb to this guy and then after that he also takes whatever he wants from you for eight years so you know tiff man tiff tiff man no problem here <laughs> yes that's what's happening and 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 i think i want the new generation the new nation the new force that is coming to have that different mentality mm. that that's not the way so, we're so, going to so live. this is this is what you have spotted one of the critical challenges among the people how do you think that people who have lived several years with such mentality you can i mean you can you can shift it within a, a period of time uh, this will take a this will take a long time oh, to do my brother mm. when i was young i only wanted a bicycle mm. i thought it would have taken me forever to get one because i didn't have the money to buy it until someone actually gave me but i also gave it away one day but from the bicycle i also <laughs> didn't think that in the next 30 years i was going to own uh fleets mm. of cars mm. buildings skyscrapers and all this blessing that god has graced me with so let's not restrict ourselves from reaching our goals mm. let's believe that with time things are possible and when you start things people get inspired people get motivated it might not be the whole ghana but a part of it can start to impact the rest that is coming right. a little group can become a big nation yes. and small numbers can turn to millions mm -hmm. let's just have that great mentality a positive mentality and be able to change our world because i can't change this place alone and i can't <coughs> transform it alone it's going to take all of us to do it and we have to change our mindset mm -hmm. i believe so i mm -hmm. and i believe that it's very possible in fact i am going to go further and further and further after ghana to mm. other places in Africa. I feel like my mission is not just to become a president in Ghana. These guys are happy. You think being a president is a big thing for me? No, I'm sorry, it's not. In fact, it's a disgraceful position because people have become presidents and they've let the country down. In fact, they regret in the end that why did I do this? Because everyone is cursing them. So it's not something that is so interesting. So but whether you win or not, you are not really moved. Right? It's not like I'm not moved, okay? And, 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 and I, I, I just want to correct you here. You know, you should not be moved because you you won. Okay? And now, when you win, you earn. When you lose, you learn. Both ways can help you in life. Mm. Sometimes people need to lose to learn to become a great winner. So they have the right champion tactics. Sometimes people win and then they don't manage what they've earned properly. So when they lose, they fall flat. Mm. It depends what kind of situation you fall in in life. Now, the point is, are we talking about going up or falling or doing all of this? No. All of that, it's part of the experiences I'm having in life. What is really important for me right now is the legacy of impacting my society, my continent, my people, black people. 
you know i want to be able to give you back your heritage value yeah. i want to be remembered like the sheikh akma tombs like the hey salasis mm. like mm. the kwame Nkrumahs, and say that this guy came he said that he was going to do this he was going to move this and he shook the world and he changed the world and he gave us access to a better life for mm. me this is what i call wealth mm. So, so, so with, the, with, the, with your movement, mm -hmm. let me use the word movement because you said you are, you you are not a politician. Uh, what what it means is that uh, how do we how do we call the the leadership process that you are building? You would need uh, a part of you in the north. You would need a part of you in the south, across all the other regions. How do we describe your movement? Okay, so this is a great question, but this also brings the reasons why I'm here. I'm here because I came to Tamale as a region to do a listening tour. And I didn't come to talk and give all of this uh, policies, knowledge, and strategies that I'm going to use mm. to you. You must be a very lucky guy tonight. You have soaked <laughs> a lot and those who are listening. But on that note, I would like to tell the people of Tamale that I'm sitting in Radio Tamale, the voice of Tamale, and I'm inviting everybody to come to the Radach Conference Center tomorrow. Mm. That is where the listening party is happening. Four o'clock on the dot. I am going to be there. Mm. I am going to be speaking to the youth, the men, the women, the girls, the boys, <laughs> the chiefs, the kings. Everybody okay, is welcome. The, it, it, is that supposed to be a change of venue? Because we saw an earlier flyer that was directing to you. you I mean, University for Development Studies. I am I also... In the, I, I'm also going to be at the UDS. Okay. The UDS is not about my movement. The UDS is about me sharing my success story with the students to motivate them. Mm. I want to be able to tell them and show them and discuss how I created wealth and how they should empower themselves and how not to just rely on the degree that they are chasing because it doesn't take them anywhere across their own border. When you go to talk from UDS <laughs> or from from Ghana University, I mean it doesn't show. But <laughs> When you, when you come from Harvard to Ghana, everybody is paying you extra. So I want to share my strategies with them. I want to share my code with them. And that's, that's what I want to do. So would you want to listen to a few people, I mean, by very, very I mean, by virtue of our callers? Sorry, I think the time to be... Okay. Uh, what time are we going there? I think we'll be there uh, maybe around 6, 7. 7. In the morning? 7 in the evening. Okay. We'll be at the UDS, 4 uh, p.m. Rodach Conference Center. So I'm really here. I'm in Tamale, you know. Yes. Um, let, I'm. I'm just, I was just trying to get the the flyer for the UDS and the time stated in the. Uh, but I think we can take a few people. You listen to the people of Tamale, if you don't mind. Yeah, sure. Okay, so let's go to the phone lines zero two zero 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 six zero seven six six. No, you get to hear. There's no problem. Hello. Yes. Hello. Good evening. Yeah, good evening, sir. How are you, sir? Yeah, I'm doing well. What's your name? Yeah, uh, this is Amingo Bang from Johanne. Yes, we want to hear from you. Speak to uh, Freedom. Yes, yes. Okay. My problem is that sometimes those people don't come early. If you are going to a race with somebody who is already half a few more than you, and you don't come early, that's always your problem. And they, they talk nicely, and you don't come early. Three years before you start small, small. Okay, he, he, do, he didn't come, come out to introduce himself earlier, or early yes. enough. Yes, early enough. And even... You start somebody, you need people to help you. You see that? As I now, as you say, if you even have a class, you're going to with NDC and PP. If you are, you are coming to power. Now that you are even speaking, now those people manipulate. They will manipulate you. Uh, how are you going to handle those things? Okay, well, I'm sure, I'm sure he'll, he'll make, he'll make uh, some brief responses if uh, the time permits. Zero two zero 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 six zero seven six six zero two zero 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 six zero seven six six. Let's listen to uh, some more. Yes, good evening. Hello. Yes, tell me your name and go ahead. Uh, my name is uh, Salasi. Let's hear. I'm calling from Blepiara. Go ahead. Uh, first of all, I would thank uh, Mr. Kwame for come giving us this opportunity. But where were him? Because he has come late. So we are praying that he should come. Uh, when you say he, he he's out. come late, when you say he's late, what, what does that really mean? What I mean is that's already. Where were him? Uh, has the elections were, ended? People are penetrating our minds. Oh, okay. Uh, these people are they are just penetrating. We are voting, but we are not getting any profit from them. Yes. 
So that's what I mean is that, like, we are welcoming him, and we are saying that he should he should win power, and 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 play these people away and leave leaving us. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, he he is worried that no, you you've stayed for you stayed so long and <laughs> and anyway, yes. Good evening. Hello. Yes. Good evening. Tell me your name and go ahead. Good evening. This is Bill from Adobe. Uh, speak up for me. Go ahead. Uh, uh, the 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 speaker he spoke with us, but we are sorry that he's late in coming. We were expecting that if like he came early January to engage the youth and advocate but them. Probably, but probably now, he was in other regions too. He would have gathered more the masses. You get my point. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you as well. Uh, I don't know when one person says this, then. The same thing I'm hearing. Oh, you, I mean, you've come so late. And then, anyway, good evening. Yeah, hello. Tell me your name and go ahead. Yes, tell me your name. Yeah, yes, yes, your line is terrible. Sorry, you can uh, reach us back, and then we can hear you. Your line is very terrible. Uh, or, or let me let me take a final person because I know you have a busy schedule. So, um, yes, hello, good evening. Yeah, good evening. Yes, tell me your name and go ahead. Please, I'm otherwise. I'm calling, calling from Somali currently in mean, UDS Cambodia. Okay, yes, uh, UDS. Okay, let's hear you. So, uh, I'm one of the directors of Nairobi uh, Airport. No, okay, you I, you are one of the soldiers. Yes, the critics and soldiers are the same. Yeah. No, uh, 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 I know him on that was last last two months. So the new force has strengthened a lot because Nairobi Airport is a guy who's visionary, like he's very visionary, but. But coming out to fight like this fight is very difficult. So initially, I like said, if he had joined one of his current party, but here in the today, I, I can see the guy is very busy. The guy has vision for Ghana. If Ghanaians can give him the support, that's me. The guy will do much for Ghana. All right, I'm grateful. Thank you. I can't take any other person. Yes. All right. So first of all, I'm coming home. <laughs> I'm coming home. Here I come, freedom. I'm coming home. Tamale. Listen, there's no such thing as late. If your mom was pregnant with you and you were late for three weeks and you still came out, you will recognize that it's a beautiful world. So there's no such thing as late. If I am coming now and there could be that change that you're looking for, that hope that you're looking for, please, why are you making lateness change your destiny? I don't feel like that. I feel like three months can change a whole moment in politics in fact seven hours can change the dynamics so we have at least eight months to vote and i want to assure you that i'm not here to do this alone i'm here because you are going to do it with me it takes you and me to overcome the issues and the problems that we're having in our national governance if you believe that Whatever the existing Joe Poli is doing is not to your benefit. Then please, if you have already compromised and promised them that I'm going to vote for you, I am telling you that you still have the chance to change your mind and nobody is going to arrest you and nobody is going to do anything to you. So I'm not late. I'm here now. And let's all move together. Thank you very much. Mm. And, um, I have seen so many messages, but uh, and then people are still calling. But I, I think because yeah. of the time. Yeah, because of the time. But I want to repeat it again. Tomorrow, this mm. can continue. I would be in UDS at 7 p.m. And 4 p.m., I will be at the Radach Conference Center. The Rad Radach Conference Center, it's me listening to you and you sharing your suggestions with me. Uh, you asked me one question, um, mm. Robert Khan, when yeah. you were telling me about my policies. Yeah. Eight of the policies is from me and my team. The other four is going to come from the public mm. of Ghana. So they have to help me to take these decisions. And that's one of the reasons why I think my listening tour is very important to me mm. and for me because and, and the, and the new, uh, new Force team because we want to hear we want to know what is happening in tamale we want to know what is happening in boliga we want to mm. know what is happening in ashanti region we just don't want to be the accra ballers paranoia presidents and this and that <laughs> we want to be the people that understand the people and and include the people to be able to build a country by ourselves for ourselves and from us mm. so again i want you to be there if you have 
questions to ask me and you have suggestions to share with the new force but at 7 p.m in the uds since its development i am mm. coming there to share my success story with you all the people in the university mm. please be there and let me share my story with you and also feel free to ask me the questions that you're not going to wait for another two years and ask me how did i become this today <laughs> i'm ready to meet you tomorrow and share that with you thank you very sure, much thanks thank so you. much thank uh, freedom for coming through we are grateful and we are only hoping that you get another step because since the elections are still coming we know you get another step into tamale uh, i will be coming again more. Uh, because I, from the text messages I've seen here, I know a lot of people would have loved to engage more. But then, just like he indicated, tomorrow at 7 p.m. in I mean 6 p.m. Uh, at 7 the p.m. at U UDS. Okay. And then 4 p.m. at Ra Radach. Okay, 4 p.m. at Radach. Yeah, Radach. Radach. Radach Lodge and Conference Center. Yes. And then uh, uh, 7 p.m. at University for Development Studies. Yes. So if you miss the one at Radach, you can make it for the one at the University for Development. It's two Studies. different things. Mm. I, I'm just let me just point of correction. Mm. In Radach, we're talking about the future of Ghana and listening to the people tell us what they have been lacking in the national governance mm. and what they've been expecting and what they think if was to happen, it would help them. Okay, that's the kind of thing that we will be talking about there. And then in the university, is me giving them the code and the, st the success the, story. The success story, you know, how to build wealth, how mm. to how to control organizations and build companies and manage your wealth mm. that's it so i will be looking forward to see you guys sure uh, on this note i want to say robicon thank you very much I'm uh grateful. you're a great interviewer you're mm. asking me questions and i've realized that if i am to keep this going you can keep me here all night <laughs> but <laughs> but thank you very much. So much thank you thank you thank you thank, thank, you, thank you. you and i appreciate you, you very much freedom are you going you can't stop freedom we promote legend we don't kill legend